हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस सिक्सटीन लेक्चर ऑन कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस राइट टिल नाउ वॉट वी हैव टर्न वी हैव डिफाइंड फंक्शंस ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शंस ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स वेरिएबल वी हैव डिफाइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शंस ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स वेरिएबल राइट एंड वी हैव सीन दिस फंक्शन एज अ फंक्शन फ्रॉम एक्स वाई प्लेन एक्स वाई प्लेन मीन्स वी हैव रिटर्न आर कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर एज एक्स प्लस आई एट वाई टू दिस प्लेन यू वी प्लेन राइट यू वी प्लेन मीन्स दैट यू हैव रिटर्न यूर फंक्शन एफ ऑफ जेड एज यू प्लस आई एट वी राइट सो वी दिस इज वॉट वी हैव डन वी हैव एन आइडिया ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स वेरिएबल एंड नेक्स्ट वी हैड आइडियाज ऑफ लिमिट्स एंड कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शन राइट ऑब्वियसली इफ यू गो बाई सिंपल कैलकुलस रियल कैलकुलस वी हैव द फर्स्ट थिंग इज लिमिट्स ओके एंड देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द फंक्शन एंड आफ्टर दैट कम्स द डिफ्रेंशिबिलिटी ऑफ द फंक्शन राइट द सेम थिंग वी वुड लाइक टू डू फॉर द डिफ्रेंशिबिलिटी ओके द सेम थिंग वी वुड लाइक टू डू फॉर दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स वेरिएबल्स बट देर इज अ मोर एज टू इट राइट वॉट इज दैट एक्चुअली इन केस ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शन वी विल डी वी विल स्टडी वॉट आर कॉल्ड एनालिटिक फंक्शन एनालिटिकल फंक्शन राइट so basically you somehow get the idea that analytic functions are uh, uh, differentiable functions they are they are more than a differentiable function we will see that in a like in a video or two but before that there is something called admissible and inadmiss uh, inadmissible uh, sorry admissible and inadmissible functions in complex uh, uh, complex analysis right let us see what are those functions so Suppose I give you, uh, I'll I'll start with the basics. Suppose I give you a number five plus root three. I don't think so. You uh, that you have ever seen a function which takes square of five and cube of root three. So basically, whenever we in real calculus we have something like this. If you have a number, we treat that that number as a whole quantity. We don't treat that number. We we cannot have something like this. X is equal to five and f of x is. Uh, x uh, uh 2 square plus 3 cube so the functions doesn't do like this the functions don't do like this that they split the number into two parts and then do one thing with the one part and another thing with the another part we rarely have such functions in case of we don't have such functions in case of real analysis now let us look at this this function complex function i have a complex function f of z which i am writing as u x comma y plus eta times v x comma y and this function is x square minus y square plus two x y eta right so basically i had a number x plus eta y i know that two x and y are two parts of the number but as a whole this number is x plus eta y and what this function is doing this function is this this thing is nothing but x plus eta y is whole square so this function is z square. so this particular function f of x f of z is equal to z square it is treating z as a number okay so basically it is you know uh, respecting the structure complex structure of the number and it is treating that number as a whole it is not breaking that number into bits and parts and doing one thing with the one part and another thing with the another part now let us look at this function f of z is equal to x square plus y square plus eta times 3 xy okay you cannot write this function in terms of z alone right you cannot for example here we had x square plus eta y square plus 2x plus into eta y so i had a formula a square plus b square plus 2ab and i have used it this but here you cannot write this function in terms of z alone right like as it is clearly uh, it can be seen clearly right but we cannot be 100% sure maybe there are some techniques by which we can write it uh, in terms of that but as of now okay by looking at it we say that we cannot write it in the form of that it means that this function is treating the part of z x part of the z separately and treating that y part of z separately right so this particular function is not respecting the complex structure of our complex number right so this particular function respects the structure of complex number right and this particular function does not respect the structure of complex number so basically 
it breaks down the complex number into parts and doing one thing with the one part and another thing with another part so we term such functions which respects the the function which respect the structure of complex number they are termed as admissible functions because these are the functions which we want because in real analysis actually we want uh, like uh, things in complex analysis should be almost similar to things in real analysis which we see right so we don't want a function which treats you know uh, different parts of a single number differently right so we call these functions admissible and we call these functions which does not the function which don't respect the structure of the complex numbers we call such functions as inadmissible functions and we are happy if we see the admissible functions only right now let us look at more example of admissible functions right i i hope the definition of admissible and inadmissible functions is clear right now let us see uh, for example if i have a function f of z is equal to z this is an admissible function then i have a function f of z is equal to z square which i have already given the example this is an admissible function f of z is equal to z cube f of z is equal to 1 by z all these functions are admissible functions right because they are treating z as an entity okay they are not separating parts of z right okay and any combination for example if i have something like this uh, f of z is equal to real of z okay or f of z is equal to imaginary of z okay tell me whether these are admissible functions or inadmissible functions this is f of z is equal to x this is f of z is equal to y right so they are treating the number z okay they are separating the uh, number z into x and y and they are treating this number z x separately and y separately so these are inadmissible functions right okay so basically uh, and you can see that actually this function is f of z i can write it as z plus z bar by 2 and this function i can write it as z minus z bar by 2 eta so whenever there is a there is a z bar in your function generally it is in, uh, inadmissible why because that if z bar is there right so it means that you have z plus you can have z plus z bar by 2 okay in your function so basically if we treat z bar as admissible okay already z is admissible we know z is admissible so if z bar is admissible so any uh, sum of two admissibles will be admissible so z plus z bar by 2 will be admissible so it means that x is admissible it means that you are allowing uh, the real part of z to be treated separately so we would avoid z bar as admissible so we will term z bar function f of z is equal to z bar as inadmissible function okay right so whenever you see a z bar in your function in the definition of your function you can say that most probably you can say that your function is inadmissible right similarly because i can write z bar as mod of z square by z right i can write this thing so if i treat z mod of z as admissible then it will turn out that z bar is admissible so i will treat mod of z as inadmissible okay so these are the rough ideas right so let us look at some uh, problems so uh, I'll try to see whether I can uh, categorize my functions as admissible and inadmissible or not. Suppose I am given this function f of z is equal to x minus 1 minus eta y upon x minus 1 square plus y square. I want to see whether this is admissible function or inadmissible function means that whether it is respecting the structure of z or not. So I, I want to convert everything into z. So the only thing I know is that x that is a real part can be written as z, as z plus z bar by 2 and y can be written as z minus z bar by 2 eta. So I'll put this thing in this. So I will get z plus z bar by 2 minus 1 minus eta into z minus z bar by 2 eta divided by this is z plus z bar by 2 minus 1 whole square plus z minus z bar by 2 eta whole square and i hope that somehow if z bar cancels 
okay only z remains then this will be an admissible function and if you do some manipulation some algebra this thing is coming out to be equal to 1 upon z minus 1 so it means that i have f of z is equal to 1 upon z minus 1 and clearly this function respects the structure of complex number because it is treating z as a single entity so this is my admissible function right right i can look at this function and i i can say that this is an admissible function right now look at another function i have this another function f to z is equal to x square plus y square plus 3x plus 1 plus 3 y eta y okay now i want to see whether this is admissible or inadmissible just do the same thing again put x is equal to z plus z bar by 2 and put y is equal to z minus z bar by 2 eta right so you will get your function f to z as you just put it and do some manipulation it will be z into z bar plus 3z plus 1 okay so basically what is this this is here z bar appears so this is not treating x uh, z as a number okay basically what it is doing i had z is equal to x plus eta y this is using x minus eta y okay in the definition it means that it is treating this part and this part separately right so this is an inadmissible function because i am seeing a z bar in the definition of the function right so these two functions were easy examples i i can see and i can just tell that the, this is admissible and this is inadmissible but now look at this function look at this function f of z is equal to i'm sorry look at this function f of z is equal to z square z bar square plus z square plus z bar square minus 2 z bar z square minus 2 z bar plus 1 divided by 10 z bar plus z z bar square minus 2 z z bar minus 5 z bar square plus z minus 5 right now okay if you see this function you will say that z bar is appearing so it should be inadmissible but you don't know right now that actually z bar square minus 1 square comes in denominator as well as in numerator so this is a common cancelable factor okay okay so this is a common cancelling factor in uh, denominator as denominator as well as numerator right so when you will cancel this factor only z will remain so it is actually an admissible function it is actually an admissible function and by looking at it you cannot say that it is an admissible function because it is hard to find out that z z bar minus one whole square is a common factor both in numerator and denominator it is not easy like to see that okay but you can try that it is actually there so it is actually an in, in uh, it, it is actually an admissible function right and you may guess it to be an inadmissible function by just looking at it right now this is one example where we are confused whether the function is admissible or inadmissible so our uh, that criteria that look at the function if that bar or z modulus of that appears in the definition it means that that is inadmissible so that fails for such functions right another example is you have this example consider e raised to power z i can write this as e raised to power x cos y plus eta sin y so if i look at this definition i'll say that okay this function is treating x separately and y separately so it should be inadmissible but i know that there is another definition 1 plus z upon 1 factorial plus z square upon 2 factorial plus z cube upon 3 factorial and so on right and if i look at this definition of e raised to power z then it is coming out to be admissible so this definition of e raised to power z tells me that it is inadmissible and this definition of e raised to power z tells me that it is admissible but it has to be one of the two right so i'm confused so my that thing that uh, just that looking at the function i can know that is actually wrong so i should have a solid criteria okay so i should have a solid criteria that tells me right that tells me whether uh, a function is admissible or not right and why do I, I want functions to be admissible because i'm used to such functions i don't want um, a function to treat my number 
ओके डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ माई नंबर डिफरेंटली राइट आई वॉन्ट अ फंक्शन विच ट्रीट्स माई नंबर एज अ सिंगल एंटिटी राइट बिकॉज माई नंबर इज एक्चुअली अ सिंगल एंटिटी राइट सो फॉर दिस सॉलिड क्राइटेरिया ओके वी विल सी लेटर ऑन बट नॉट नाउ दैट डिफ्रेंशिबिलिटी प्लेज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल ओके सो डिफ्रेंशिबिलिटी ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स सो इफ वी लर्न अबाउट द डिफ्रेंशिबिलिटी ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स वी कैन कम अप विद अ क्राइटेरिया विच टेल्स अस टू Uh, distinguish between which okay allows us to distinguish between admissible and inadmissible function so this is one of the more okay uh, reasons to study the differentiability of course uh, this is a general technique that you have uh, studied the limits of complex functions of complex complex variables then you have studied the continuity and you will definitely now study the differentiability but this is another you know uh, another advantage of studying the differentiability because it will give us a tool to distinguish the admissible and inadmissible uh, functions we will not do it now because for the next few videos we will study only the differentiability and analyticity of complex functions and it will turn out that this differentiability and analyticity of complex numbers the complex functions will give us a tool to distinguish between the admissible and inadmissible functions so from the next video onwards we'll study this differentiability and analyticity thank you